Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Good to have you all with us today as we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. Uh, You might remember there's some extra supplies that you need, whether that is a squirter or a bowl of water, whatever that might be. Maybe each time you hear the word baptism or water, you might want to splash a little on each other as today we are reminded of our baptism as we are connected with Jesus in this moment of grace and awe. So welcome to worship, and together we sing. of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit, that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from Genesis, chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Our second reading comes from Acts chapter 19. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul paused through the excuse me, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, "Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers?" They replied, "No. We have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit." Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me, and I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And the voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So I'm going to invite you to uh, come with me over to the baptismal font this morning, because this is uh, what we celebrate today, what we honor today, the baptism of Jesus, remembering and affirming our own baptisms, as we will later in the service. And so I was thinking about how is it that we remember our baptisms? And Scott and I were looking through pictures, and we came across a picture of my dog, Lucy, um, who happened to be a a dog who loved rain many years ago, and we would walk through our neighborhood, which was a circle, and we would play and and jump in the puddles, and we would walk the circle several times, and our neighbors would just look at us like we were crazy. But I think in that moment, Scott reminded me that we are remembering our baptism. Or maybe there's times in your life where you um, are washing your hands. We've all been doing that a lot lately, washing our hands and singing happy birthday to ourselves. Maybe that's a time that we are remembering our baptism. Or maybe you do have your squirter ready, and you are ready to remember today. Or if you are cannonballing into a pool, or if you are just merely taking a bath, whatever it might be, water is involved is a time to remember this gift of grace in our lives. This gift where we are connected as a community, where we are connected to God's grace. So I invited you to have a bowl of water today. As uh, last week we talked about the candle and the light being, uh, we followed the star to Jesus, and now our epiphany, our revelation, comes in water today, as all of our scriptures that we read this morning have to do with water, especially in the Gospel of Mark, where we have this opening scene, and actually from the very beginning of the Gospel of Mark, verse 1 says, in the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, from the very beginning, This scene that we have today sets the tone for what happens next. Baptism is the very first thing to happen, and it shapes what we expect of who Jesus is, what Jesus is about, what God is up to in Jesus. Baptism becomes this entry into these questions. And in Mark's story, Jesus presents himself for John, to John, for baptism. And the heavens are opened. They are torn apart. Schizo is the word. Torn apart, ripped apart, unable to be put back together again. Creation is forever changed. And then Jesus is commissioned by this voice, named by this voice, identified as God's own. And then Jesus is literally possessed by God's Spirit. The Spirit in the form of the dove comes into him. It comes into him. Es aton is the word. He's infused with the Spirit of God. This is the most electric scene that we have at the beginning of a gospel. Because look out, the entire fabric of creation is altered, and as a result of this story, it's forever changed. 
Now we're going to hear more about that in the coming weeks as to what that looks like and how it's revealed. That's the point of this epiphany season. And even as our lives look ordinary day to day, this moment is huge. God is no longer at a distance. God is on the loose in our face, stirring up trouble. God is on the loose in the event of Jesus Christ. I don't know if you've ever heard of the musician Peter Mayer. He uh, is Jimmy Buffett's guitar player, and he wrote this song that God is at loose in the world. And some of those lyrics are, through the ink of thinking sages weaves the hand of the divine. Words leap off the pages, breaking in the windows, leaping over walls. All you asked for was a cool glass of water, and you got a waterfall. Right? God is loose in the world. The universe is singing. Love is loose in the world. If you want the song, let me know, and I'll, I'll send it your way. But in verse 10, it's very clear that from the start, God runs loose through the ministry of Jesus. In this electric scene, it is an inauguration, the start of Jesus' ministry, equipping Jesus to deal with temptation, orienting his mission, anchoring his ministry, giving him an unassailable identity that makes everything possible. This is baptismal grace, stirring up trouble. We saw this in the book of Acts as Paul was baptizing people who immediately then began to prophesy, to witness that the heavens were torn apart and the Spirit was upon them. This is baptismal grace. The heavens are torn apart and we are given the promises of forgiveness of sin, yes. But if John's baptism is the focus, we forget that we are immersed in God's gracious welcome and transformed by the Holy Spirit. And I often think that that's what happens, right? I think, for me, I get so caught up in the daily life and the daily humdrum of things that I fail to acknowledge and recognize this mystery among us. That the heavens are torn apart in our midst and life is changed forever, transformed in our identity. Baptism identifies us, and we the hear the truth of who we are. Where so much else in our life describes us, whether that's our occupation, our race, ethnicity, gender, sexuality, life experience, whether that's good or bad, our passions, our interests, our commitments, they describe us. But our status as beloved children defines us. And if there is anything that can get us through life, it is that identity. Being accepted for who we are. For years, as a pastor, I have met with families as we prepare for baptism. We talk about the words that are spoken, why water is poured. We talk about the candle that we light. We talk about um, the oil that we put on our foreheads, talking about this is the uh, mark of the cross of Christ forever. Kind of like an invisible tattoo, we often say, when uh, talking to children especially about what baptism is all about. And I will never forget this one family in Texas. Um, <laughs> the dad was just there, right? He was just listening and, and following along, and he was really there to support his wife who wanted this child, their child, baptized. And so we get through all of this, we get to the day, we talk about what it means to be uh, standing amongst a congregation and being welcomed into the congregation and all of those things. And we get to the moment of baptism and I'm baptizing their child in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And this dad won't let me go on. He stops the service. And, you know, there's more stuff that happens, right? We got to put on the sign of the cross. We got to light the candle. We got to welcome. But he stops the service so that he can have a moment to be able to share what just happened for him at that font. 
I'm reminded that for, for most people, and especially parents, as they're trying to wrangle their children by the font and make sure that the child is quiet and everything is going well, we miss these moments. But for this dad, the heavens were torn apart. And he couldn't help but testify to that moment. And then his child literally testified to it because normally I tell them to wipe off the oil that is on their forehead from the sign of the cross. They did not. And it's Texas at an outdoor picnic and a nice little sunburn on that poor little child. And he definitely had this uh, visible tattoo for quite some time. But that also became part of this dad's story and opportunity to witness to all those around as the heavens were schizified. That's not really a word, but I thought it was pretty cool. Schizified, as we are named and claimed, that nothing about us is ever going to be the same. And when we realize this moment, or even if we wait and recognize it over time, this is the baptismal promise and call, that God renders the heavens open, and God pushes through the firmament and says, yes. Yes, you are my beloved. And it's not just a moment of gratitude. It needs to be a moment of awe, as someone said. It's not just a moment of reliance on our baptismal promise, but a moment to, of rediscovery of who God really is. And it's not just a moment of security and steadfastness, but a moment of certainty that when we look for God, we should actually be looking for the heavens to be torn apart. Because when that happens, things change and God is loose in the world. We just need to open our eyes and see it and become a part of it and witness to that as we too are claimed and named. Thanks be to God.
So I invite you to join me at the baptismal font for our affirmation of baptism. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism as we come before God to make public affirmation of baptism into Christ. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life in Christ? We do and we ask God to help and guide us. At this point, I would ask if you haven't already got your bowl ready as we pray together, feel free to make the sign of the cross on yourself. Feel free to sprinkle a little and remind those around you. I can't quite reach anybody in here, but we can pretend. So as we pray and as the Spirit is moving over us, let the Spirit move over the waters as well. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to, into eternal life. Stir up in your people the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. We continue our time of prayer guided by Christ, made known to the nations. Let's, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world and its leaders, that guided by the Holy Spirit, they may proclaim God's love present in our midst. We pray for the congregation gathered today, for students and teachers in our schools, for those seeking renewal in their daily work, for those suffering hardships of loss of job or security, for those seeking and hoping for rejuvenation in their baptismal living, that all the beloved of God experience grace and peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For wilderness and water, wind and wild beasts, and all living things on earth, that God's goodness is revealed through the creation, and faithful stewards care for all that God has made. We pray for the nations of the world and their leaders, for laborers busy both day and night, and for peacemakers amid strife, that God inspire all people to use their strength wisely, Remind us and show us people like Martin Luther King Jr. and those in the civil rights movement who embraced nonviolence in order to put an end to a violent system. Let us too embrace nonviolence as we participate in, as citizens in our community and in our nation. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. 
for the sick and those who provide medical care, for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all suffering, especially for Gladys, Bob Crome and his family, Ginny, Barry and Barbara, Larry, Randy, Tom, Michael, Margaret, Jean, all of those affected by the loss of life and livelihood, whether that's from the earthquakes in Indonesia or from COVID-19. And we pray for all of those whom we name before you now. We pray that you continue to shower your compassion upon the sick and the healing. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share the peace among you with those around you in your home. And as always, take note of those who need this extra measure of grace today. As we share in a musical offering, we might need a moment. Amy was having a little bit of a coughing moment. She's good. So we will share in a moment of musical offering. indeed. The Lord be with you. And also and also you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give our thanks and praise. and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son. 
and the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O holy God, light and life of the world. In the beginning, your voice flew over the mighty waters. You separated the waters and made the dry land and brought life throughout creation. You led your people Israel through the sea and out of bondage and through the river Jordan into the land of promise. You brought forth streams of water in the wilderness and commanded your children to wash in the water for purification and for healing. You have given prophets and seers visions of the river flowing from the heavenly temple as balm and blessing. You sent your prophet John to prepare the way of the Lord, proclaiming a baptism of repentance. And in Jesus, you stepped into the raging waters, identifying with the penitent and extending your hand of salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his in incarnation in human flesh, his love of those in need, and his prayer for his disciples, his dying and rising, we await the day when all creation rejoices in his light. By your Spirit, bless us and this meal, that it may be for us the gift of faith, nourishing and strengthening us to plunge into service in your kingdom. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God, incarnate power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to the table where Christ meets you. Eat, rejoice, and be glad. Thanks be to God. I invite you to take your bread, and with these words, receive the promise. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. Take your wine or your juice, and with these words, receive the promise. This is the blood of Christ, shed for you. Amen. I would invite you at this time, if you have people in your home that are not receiving communion, to take this moment and lay your hands on their head, make the sign of the cross on their forehead, give them that invisible tattoo moment, and remind them that they are beloved children of God. I invite you to stand as you are comfortable and able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us from your very self with the body and blood of Christ. Through this mystery, send us forth to proclaim your promise to a world in need. 
through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Receive the blessing. The God of glory dwell in you richly. Name you beloved and shine brightly on your path. The blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ and walk in his light. Thanks be to God. Amen.